perhaps this is where the amendments I'm speaking for would, would, uh, might be viewed a little differently. Uh, I, would, I would like to also speak in favor of amendment number two, which I have offered. This is a sense of Congress regarding extremism in the military. I got a tremendous amount of firsthand feedback from service members in my district and frankly around the country that the stand down over extremism created more division in the ranks. I heard from people who talked about the necessity of cohesion and unity and similar experience in military training to achieve the highest level of capability and effectiveness. And the stand down over extremism has created some really lasting schisms, even within units where our service members are starting to think about racial identity before they think about common purpose. The good news is that following that stand down on April 5th, uh, 2022, Secretary of Defense Austin said, and I'm quoting directly, that 99% of our people are doing the right thing every day. And uh, also on May 12th, 2022, House Armed Services Chairman Adam Smith said that really this isn't something that anyone, that white supremacy in the ranks isn't something that anyone should obsess over, essentially. And so I would ask that Amendment Number 2 be adopted uh, so that our military does not have to go through these types of uh, divisive political performances and everyone's able to, uh, to get back to the mission that we all know is so important. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to speak in favor of Amendment Number 8, which I have offered along with my colleagues, Mr. Jackson of Texas, Mr. Johnson of Louisiana, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Desjardins uh, of uh, Tennessee, uh, Mr. Roy, uh, Ms. Hartzler, and Mr. Posey. And uh, this amendment deals with changes uh, to assignment location and to basing based on disagreement with state law. I'm very concerned that we now have a military that believes that where our service members ought to be assigned is based on whether or not the DOD agrees with the politics of that state. And I hold that view based on the articulation of the Army's policy in a uh, military.com publication where uh, it says, quote, the policy would ostensibly sanction soldiers to declare that certain states are too racist, too homophobic, too sexist, or otherwise discriminatory, discriminatory to be able to live there safely and comfortably. If finalized, the new rules would clarify situations that would entitle a soldier to so-called compassionate reassignment. Mr. Chairman, I do not believe that any state in our country is too racist or too homophobic or too sexist to host military mission, especially when that military mission is essential to the preservation of our freedoms. And I think we need a vote on whether or not we want a DOD that can just overrule state law and make a decision that there are some states like maybe Texas or maybe Florida or maybe Oklahoma that they want to punish because those are red states and they don't like how those states view abortion or some other issue of social divide. Um, there's also Air, or Mr. Chairman, I'd seek unanimous consent to enter that into the record. Without objection. And uh, Mr. Chairman, the Air Force's position on the matter was similarly stated by Under Secretary of the Air Force, Gina Ortiz. She said, quote, we are closely tracking state laws and legislation to ensure we prepare for and mitigate effects to our airmen, guardians, and their families. I, I do not know what that means uh, to mitigate effects, but um, the, uh, the Under Secretary goes on to say that it, it deals with what bases that those service members might be assigned to. So that's amendment number eight that I've offered um, that I would ask the committee to allow uh, the members of the House to vote on.